In September 506 CE, the fathers of what would later become the Roman Catholic Church gathered in southern France to draw up dozens of new laws. Some forbade clergy from visiting unrelated women. Others forbade Christians from marrying anyone more closely related than their third cousin. The authors of a sweeping new study say that last seemingly trivial prohibition may have given birth to Western civilization as we know it. The church's early ban on cousin marriage, the researchers say, weakened the tight kinship structures that had previously defined European populations, fostering new streaks of independence, nonconformity, and a willingness to work with strangers. And as the church's influence spread, those qualities blossomed into a suite of psychological traits common today across Western industrialized nations, they argue. They found that the longer a population spent under the rule of the Roman Catholic Church, the lower its kinship intensity score, meaning lower rates of cousin marriage and polygamy, and looser familial and clan structures. And as kinship intensity drops off in their data, a certain suite of traits grows stronger, including individualism, nonconformity, and willingness to trust and help strangers, the researchers report today in Science. The traits identified in the study may also have paved the way for democratic governance. You need a civic society to sustain democracy, and what we look at in our paper is, I believe, a precursor for such a civic society, says co-author Jonathan Schultz, an economist at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. It's individualistic people who work together and cooperate across family boundaries. The Haginal Line is a border that links St. Petersburg, Russia and Trieste, Italy. In 1965, John Haginal discovered it divides Europe into two areas characterized by different levels of nuptiality. To the west of the line, marriage rates and thus fertility were comparatively low, and a significant minority of women married later remained single, to the east of the line and in the Mediterranean in select pockets of northwestern Europe, early marriage was the norm, and high fertility was countered by high mortality. West of this line, the average age of marriage for women was 23 or more, men 26, spouses were relatively close in age, a substantial number of women married for the first time in their 30s and 40s, and 10% to 20% of adults never married. East of the line, the mean age of both sexes at marriage was earlier, spousal age disparity was greater, and marriage more nearly universal. Inside, or to the west of, the Hagel line we find. Late marriage in 10 to 20% of adults never marrying. Small families, either nuclear or STEM. Higher average IQ than outside the line. The highest concentrations of human accomplishment in Europe. More democracy. Greater civic mindedness or orientation towards the commonweal. Generally low perceived corruption. High individualism. And low homicide rates in the 19th century. Also, according to Renaissance man journalist William Tucker, author of Marriage and Civilization, how monogamy made us human, Christianity, in its adamant opposition to polygamy, was the most powerful force for implementing monogamy in Western civilization. All societies are imperfect, but the least imperfect societies, according to Tucker, and those most likely to war only intermittently rather than continuously, practice monogamy. By optimizing everyone's individual outcome in a way that maintains the integrity of the entire society, rather than maximizing the outcomes of the high-status view, as with polygamy, Monogamy creates an environment of trust where human endeavors flourish. Tucker brings a persuasive body of biological, evolutionary and anthropological scholarship to bear on a recurrent theme that the besetting weakness of polygamous societies is the inability to get on with neighbors. Everywhere polygamy is practiced, it creates conflict, Tucker asserts. In polygamous societies, men spend most of their time fighting amongst themselves for access to females, and raiding neighboring tribes for them becomes a norm, raids are our agriculture is an old era proverb. A shortage of women creates volatility in low-status men. They may as in the Ottoman Empire, which featured harems be turned into eunuchs or, under Wahhabist influence, be molded into assassins and terrorists, and sent off to holy war. Whether it was early agriculturalists, nomad herders, Mongols or Mormons, virtually all polygamous societies have suffered internal violence and continually contested borders.